happy to be. I think I'm dying here, man. It's that time again for another bi-weekly podcast with your hosts, Rotten Roger DeMarco and Evil Dead Inks and Be Grateful, Little Trolls in China Don't Even Get Milk. <laughs> oh boy, that's right. It's uh, another two weeks down and uh, we're trudging into the Halloween season and it's no secret if you've... Um, Hung out with Evil and I for any length of time via the YouTube channel, via the podcast that you're listening to right now or watching right now. Um, you've heard us profess our love in one way or another for the man, the myth, the legend, Ernest P. Worrell. Yes. So it's just a matter of time before we arrived. What's the P stand for? Perfect. <laughs> Good. Mr. Perfect. He can That's throw a football. Hitting. Yeah, yeah. Throw a football and catch, himself. catch it. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, we just, we love us some Ernest, and, and this, I know what you're thinking. Hey, that's a franchise movie. This should be in the franchise realm. Kind of, yes. Kind of, but, but not really. All Ernest Milton movies are pretty standalone-ish, but I do agree they could be totally franchisable, and at some point I'm sure we will run out of everything else to do, and <laughs> we will put the other Ernest movies in there, and they will be a gem to go through, no doubt about it. But uh, this is in the spooky season, so it's like, well, let's retread some ground we've covered in a live show way back when and talk Ernest Scared Stupid. Yeah, which for me, I know you're like super, super well-versed in your Ernest um, knowledge. You've seen all of them. Most of them. And, and there's a lot. It just seemed to go yeah. on and on and on I tra- and on I trailed forever. off once he went to the army. Yeah. In Africa. Yeah, that's like... 96, 97. Yeah. Really, I kinda, like slam dunk Ernest yeah, era. And I, stuff. I, I was on board with him going back to school, even when he became slam dunk Ernest, when he got the magic shoes from a dead Kareem Abdul Jabbar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But that's where I was like, I don't know. I, or, or rides again. I think that was definitely like, all right, I'm, I'm good on wherever you journey to next. Like, I really kind of just stick to his main three of yeah. going to camp, going to jail, and being scared. Dumb. I feel. I say they feel like they have the biggest budgets out of all of them because eventually they, they, they sort of have this. I think this was the last like big the, the theatrical release. Yeah, because they have like a diminishing return and they just get like closer and closer to bargain bin like dollar store quality movies. Yeah. Regardless of the fact that uh, Jim Varney is fantastic, don't get me wrong. But yes, as far as Wheelhouse goes, I mean, you, to me, Ernest, my wheelhouse exists with two movies: Goes to Jail. Scared stupid. They're the only two that I really, really fight for, I lobby for. And uh, this movie's no exception. This is a perfect spooky season movie. This is a perfect, my kid's not quite old enough for Terrifier type of movie. You know what I'm saying? Wow, what a... <laughs> the jump. That's that's the That should be the furthest end of the spectrum, is a topless woman in her underwear getting severed in half, crotch first. Yeah. And then you have... Ernest battling a troll and confusing milk for Miak. Booger lips. Yeah. So, but yeah, th- this is a very good, like, hey, my kid is wetting their whistle. This may still give you a nightmare. I'm not going to front because... Uh, I've heard from a few people that they are very creeped out by the troll. Multiple, I never have been. Plural. Trolls, yeah. Yeah. Towards the tail end of the movie, this becomes a... a plural troll attack trolls 
Not to be confused with the goblins of Nilbog, which are in Troll 2. So they're not trolls. It's goblin spell backwards. Yes. <laughs> yep. Uh, so you got to pee on all the green things. Don't let your family eat the green things. But you can't piss on hospitality. We won't allow it. I'm going to tighten my belt one more loop so I don't feel hunger pains or whatever the line is. But this is this is awesome because it gives us that – I mean, kids are – this is Willy Wonka level of violence, right? Like kids are getting killed, air quotes. They're getting turned – They're getting Transformed turned into, into wooden dolls. Yeah, but we know – from Jump Street, when you're watching this movie, it's it's terrifying, but we know that it's going to get resolved eventually. It's like like these kids are not going to stay dead. It's not yeah, like a downer of a movie, you know. I mean, but they're also they're not earnest. So the yeah. biggest like who cares? <laughs> <laughs> the biggest person I feel bad for is Ernest, and that's just when they turn his dog into a wooden doll. I feel sorry for him when Bobby and uh, what's his name just take advantage of him with all the troll be gone. Oh my gosh, those are absolute hucksters, <laughs> snake oil salesmen. I wish I did the I re- recalculated what the inflation is because it's like <laughs> uh, over a thousand dollars in 1991. So what's that like three billion dollars yeah, in today's right, money that right. Ernest just has on hand? You can buy the Playboy Mansion with the inflation, which he lives like. Pee wee, oh yeah, playhouse style. Like he just all the when they build room. a treehouse, he just brings all this random shit to the treehouse, which includes like the front fender of a car. That's a movie in and of itself, is because they wander into Catwoman's <clears throat> woods, and then it's like this tree's perfect. Uh, That's a terrible Ernest impression. I'm sorry, but and then the next smash cut to him like i got all sorts of stuff and then it's just a pile of his stuff yeah, it's it's weird that the city's like we got to really crack down on on this lady for having all this weird shit all over her yard and he brings I, more. Ernest has to be the like champion hoarder of the town oh yeah yeah even so, i've been collecting this stuff for years where where well, do you get the stuff to build a pizza launcher i feel like because he's the garbage man he's He's sifting through that shit. Uh, yeah, he's taking shit home. He's like... Uh, Armed and dangerous. He's like, look, he's a perfectly good shoe. Asai Morales or whatever is the actor's name is from La Bamba, like with the big carrot. Like, eat it, eat it. You know, anything weird that he finds, he's taking home. See, I'm picturing the long hair guy from Armed and Dangerous that's like patrolling, guarding garbage. Yeah. And he's like, I found a shoe. And he's like, look at this comb. Perfectly red. Hardly even used. Look out for a toothbrush. It looks exactly like this. Red. <laughs> perfect color. Perfect color. Where is it at? Three dunes that way. All right, I'm going to go look for it. You guys take care. You guys need anything? That's Ernest out there. He oh. will run into that guy being like, what's up, man? Just looking for some cool stuff. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. It's like a cross between Ernest and uh, uh, the bad guy from Billy Madison. <laughs> oh, we talked about him a few weeks ago. We sure did. Um, but, yeah, well, I, he needs all that stuff, right? Because he his whole entire house, like you said, very Pee-wee-esque, is just – Rube Goldberg machine after Rube Goldberg machine to do the most of, of mundane things. We don't really see them that much in this movie, but no, we that's, know. Yeah, that's 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 the weird thing he doesn't do in this movie because in the other like he has, his other two big movies, he does do that. Like he builds that and goes to camp. He builds that thing that he's cooking hot dogs and mm-hmm. whole chickens on on a spit but he's got like it's wrapped around a leather strap around his foot so he can turn it so either it keeps rotating or it spins the other way yeah or counterclockwise yeah yeah and he's got all that weird shit in his house he goes to camp well he doesn't have a traditional shower he just jumps into a washing machine Mm -hmm. without a lid on it i love the bobbing up and down too with the shower cap (laughs) yeah with a shower cap over his ball cap because he is a walking talking cartoon character and that's why he's so awesome it's off off the beaten track but it i, I could watch it <coughs> looped for hours when he hits that button and he's just wow, 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 wow. that that's yeah that's this one i was gonna that's, say no, that goes to, that oh, goes to jail goes in to the jail, washing yeah. machine because i thought that happened i thought that was like a recurring thing like they just <laughs> you know he's just well, always he's, he's well he battles toilets and goes to camp and he's battling his washing machine shower and goes to jail. I guess it's the, the, the equivalent is he's battling his own garbage truck in this one. Cause we do get the callback 
to goes to jail with when he takes the batteries out of the remote and then the like rotoscoped like lightning like, <laughs> it, like arcs ah. over. Ah. <laughs> He's. I've got a family to feed. Yeah, he is facing near death of being crushed in his own garbage truck yeah, and he's putting he's, on a performance for nobody. Yeah, he's about to get Child's Play 3'd up in here. And he's doing a, a voice for a doll's <laughs> You'll never get away with this, Ernest. I know where you live. My favorite part of the whole movie, which it doesn't even have anything. I just think that Ernest is schizophrenic, is when he is talking about the Ottomans. And so, he, <laughs> you know, because Ernest's whole thing, for anyone who's new to Ernest, which how could you be? And when... I hope to, I hope that this broadens your horizon, but like he has like a set of characters that he loves to revisit, like the, the old, old grandma or whatever. Yeah, and the neck brace. Yep. Would you talk to your mother that way? And um, Is this the kind of abuse that poor woman must endure? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's got a he plays a Viking. Oh yeah. A lumberjack. Yeah, yeah. A, like an aviator. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like a fighter pilot pilot aviator. And he, yeah, he can pull from those characters, and they're in they're in all the tentpole movies. But he also, I feel like he does the most here because he has, he introduces like the red hair beautician, the yeah. hairspray will fix anything. But he's also got characters that aren't in his wheelhouse that he doesn't pull from when it comes to those montages. Like he plays the old man at the beginning. That's oh, yeah. like chasing down the troll, the whole the whole troll which, thing. Which I love. I can't remember what it's a part of, but like he has a like if you get like the best of Ernest like a DVD set. There's a bit in there where he's playing an old like broke man, and he's they're so broke they're pretending to eat dinner, <laughs> and he's yelling at his son for eating his his pretend dinner too fast. <laughs> See, and he that's because he's got to be classically trained. You know what Absolutely, I mean? Absolutely, he's. Yes. he's, he's he just got Incredible. pigeonholed because they saw him in this one light, and they could never see him out of that light. So he just stayed there, just like you know uh, Paul Rubens did. Yeah, because I mean, you know, which is unfortunate in that aspect. Because I feel like if that was done today, he would really be able to branch out and do all kinds of different things. Kind of like a Chris Farley, you know, just yeah. being like, "Oh, you're funny because you're fat, so stay, <laughs> stay there." And it's bullcrap because because uh, yeah, the range and, is and outstanding. Everybody has seen. The pictures of Jim Varney like out in the streets, and they're like, <laughs> they're like Jim Varney's gonna make your kids laugh, then take your wife. Oh, dude, he's a smooth criminal for sure. Yeah, uh, and but again, with his range, like there's that one famous picture of like all of his different faces. Oh uh, yeah, like the dude has a rubber face, and, and which is why, which helps with all the Im- impressions. And he started out being like just a sp- like a he did commercials for a dairy company. Mm-hmm. That's what the locally. you know what I mean, Vern. Yeah. started and then it just it kind of snowballed it's kind of like when you would have a, a small character be on saturday night live and then they become wayne campbell it's, you know what i mean it's like, orlando jones being the make seven up yours guy yeah and then all of a sudden now he's in um evolution mm-hmm. the replacements it's that although we don't really see much of him anymore unfortunately yeah he was mad tv was he mad tv yeah, i think he i think he did a a small stint on mad tv but Going back to this movie, um, also has a weird kind of tie-in and feel to me. Very Monster Squad-y. It's, yeah, we it's... got the Sean, like, we got Sean from Monster Squad, whose dad is a cop. And in this movie, we've got the one, the lead kid who is essentially Sean from Monster Squad, and his dad's a cop. We just have that aesthetic, though. It's, just, it's kids knowing more than adults do. Oh, yeah. Adults are just getting... Just getting wrecked, like getting their feet nailed to a tree, <laughs> and one one other adult is getting ready to have an engine block thrown on top of him. Oh like, yeah, there's it's funny, but it's like <laughs> we're really just that far away from something very gruesome happening. <laughs> Never in an earnest movie, they would just they would they would cut to them being like flat, and then they would get up or something. You know, yeah, it wouldn't look like Death Wish Eli Roth where the no. whole engine yeah, the block dent, falls yeah. on a dude. Yeah, or the dude with the dented skull splatter hits everywhere. Which I feel dumb because I never picked up on it until super recently, and I say super mm. recently within the last probably five years or so. I did not ever put two and two together that the other trolls that get spawned yes. are repurposed killer clown designs. Yes. Kyoto that's, Brothers. I was going to say, that's a super deep cut. 
because <laughs> but the it's Kyoto bl- or Kyoto or however you say it. I say Kyoto Brothers. Kyoto. The Kyoto Brothers, which are, these are, for the 80s, they are the pinnacle, right? To me, they are um, KMB before KMB. I'm going to be they're, meeting them really soon. They're, I'm very jealous of that. <laughs> two brothers. It's just called Two Brothers. Rick and Morty reference, deep cut. But uh, it's it's these two brothers that are very geeky, and they love to sculpt. They they love to write, direct. They do everything. And they got to do the troll effects in this movie and all the other weird effects, like the little sculptures, the statues, and all that stuff. Probably built that tree. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Um, they have a very, like, whimsical mind. And when they got tasked with, hey, let's have a bunch of trolls, they're just looking around in their shop like, man, we don't have time to sculpt eight trolls. What do we have? Oh, we've got Fatso from Killer Clowns. We've got whatever the... Big nose. The big nose one. Yeah. <clears throat> so uh, quick, paint them brown. Yeah, repurpose. And, uh, you know, that is one thing where it actually helped because those molds or those sculpts we're 20 plus years old, and anybody who knows anything about latex knows it starts to kind of degrade and get like a really, it'll kind of implode on itself. It creates its own wrinkles before it eats itself. So, Luckily, this is not even 10 years removed from when it was used in yeah. Killer Clowns, because this was 91. 91. So, but it's got a little bit of um, Halloween 1 to Halloween 2 latex max, mask wear, you know? A little bit, yeah. So, uh, the repainting it, you have to really kind of eagle eye the killer clown because if you don't if you don't go into it thinking that's fatso from killer clowns you're totally just okay it's a troll but yeah yeah it's super awesome to be able to be like uh, i have something i'm not gonna sculpt something <laughs> let me airbrush this shit right quick like what do you need you need three you need three more <clears throat> trolls before we start filming again tomorrow by, yeah by tomorrow what do you got ah <laughs> uh... Let me dig into the vault right quick. <laughs> yep. Which is why guys like uh, Rick Baker and Tom Savini just keep everything. Tom Savini has, like, molds of famous people's heads in his, like, That's garden t- outside. <laughs> like, let me grab <laughs> Kevin Bacon's fucking marble skull <laughs> or whatever. Like, I would utilize that a lot. I'd, like, just make me a full-size Kevin Bacon, like... <laughs> Fountain, yeah, like a fountain, <laughs> like, yeah, <laughs> shooting out of his mouth, but like the and little... the neck hole, just <laughs> <laughs> it comes out of the mouth and it lands here, and then <laughs> oh, he does, he takes it very seasonally, like he colors the water red for yeah. for the month of October. Yes. For every actual Friday the Thirteenth, he'll color it red and have it stained. The rest of the time, it's just regular ass water. Yep, yep. That's I guarantee that Tom Savini does something like that, but. I want to hope because I want to hope. I want to believe the man has fun. I want to, at yeah. some point because he sure doesn't ever seem to look like it when he's at shows. No, he's very dry. Unlike um, Ernest P. Worrell, who chews this fucking scenery nonstop in this movie, even though everything that happens is his fault. Because of course he gets told, "I'm not supposed to do this." Because then, like, and then he Only does if this. Something like this would happen. Like this, and, and saying this, like here. And then the troll comes out of the tree like the, the headless horseman in Sleepy Hollow. Yeah, like, and it's not like he's being. He doesn't like he find like he finds that out like he shouldn't have done that after the fact. It's literally in real time. Uh, the little girl's like a warl, like you. Puts yep. his hands here, like 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 right right, right now, yeah. and says these words. You what? <laughs> you fucking idiot. Well, and. You know, to be fair, he says each generation of world is going to be dumber and dumber and dumber and dumber. But are this, they really? Though I, I don't know. This may be the like in my wheelhouse as far as the th- the movies that I like the most. This may be the most buffoonery uh, that we see from him. You know what I mean? Because like, if you compare it to Goes to Jail. What's he? What's he really screw up in in that movie? In the grand scheme of things, he breaks a pen. He chews on a pen. He I gets like, thrown in prison, which is not his fault. He smashes that one guard against the the like bars multiple times. Oh yeah, when he's trying to get the uh, 
No, I mean, look at him. Bang, bang, yeah, bang. Really, really look at him. <laughs> he wrecks the bank multiple times. Apparently so often he's just always assumed he's in the vault of the bank. Mr. Pendle Smite. And no one... <laughs> Pendle Fire, Pendle Smoot. <laughs> and they don't even ever think he's doing nefarious shit in there. They're like, you just always wake up in the vault in the morning. That's where we just find you. Yeah. We don't ever think you're stealing anything or any of the sorts. You're just... That's okay. just where you end up. Okay. So, yeah, he does fuck up quite a bit. But I just... He almost... He, uh, he doesn't put any lives in danger like he has a spot in this movie where he has two unknown to him he has two children trapped in his garbage truck yes and before want unveiling me to it, him? <laughs> yeah before unveiling it to the head of police and the mayor of the town he's like you want me to squish him flat share that's what they open yeah, it up squish him flat like just just open it and i love how the cop has his gun just drawn ready to just smoke whatever comes out could be a raccoon he's just he's like i've had a hell of a night i don't know what is gonna come out of the back of ernest p Worrell's truck but it is getting platooned yeah it's just getting like queen latifah and set it off (laughs) what what if he did his open fire my son i love my dead gay son (laughs) they didn't take the mask off this come out Ah, ah, (laughs) it does the it does the uh, night of the demon or night of the Creeps, creeps camera from with, uh, that, Tom Atkins. Ah. I was like that, or I like the uh, Dumb and Dumber, like when he's fantasizing about shooting, <laughs> shooting the husband that was kidnapped. Yeah, die. <laughs> this. <laughs> yeah, and just get this. Uh, 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 yeah, the they, two mayor's kids. They fall down. The masks roll off. <laughs> it's like. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, the slow reveal. They were just Dad, kids. help. <laughs> I loved you. Yeah. Uh, then you smash cut to the dad on his knees holding one of their shoes. Yeah. Ernest is just like backing up. Yeah. <laughs> Open the door to his truck. <laughs> Turning the... <laughs> <laughs> Oh, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. There goes that idiot now. Like, which when we're introduced to him, he's dragging some random civilian behind his garbage truck it is, stop the truck <laughs> we never see that person ever again <laughs> we don't know who which it is. again since no one sells that's a big deal that this is happening all the time i uh, very and much like two weeks ago when we were talking about larry drake maybe they both sh- share like a similar they they might but uh, uh, the I, term waterhead is not uh, endearing but <laughs> i throw shame on the mayor for he tasks Ernest with cleaning up old lady Hackmore, great name. Yeah. Her her yard, which it's just Catwoman. It looks like it's multiple acres of like welded steel, like abstract art. Yeah, I was gonna say it's just art, like clear rivers in Final he has, Destination. He has a dump truck. Mm-hmm. And he is just a guy. You better call one eight 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 got junk or whatever it yeah, is this for orders. Is clearly, like a four to eight person team gig to have it done in any kind of quick su- succession. Like yeah, oh this, yeah. is a, this one person, one vehicle job would take the summer to do. Oh yeah, it's like this then has to like, be her, like and he's her, expecting like you should have done that today. Yeah, her family shows up, and then the got junk trucks show up, and then Matt, whatever his name is from hoarders, show up, and then Eartha Kitt's like got a weird connection to like bags of cat shit and she can't throw them away like then that's a special feature of like oh, that, the hoarders episode of trying to get done that through reveal land. Ernest drives the dump truck out of the way and reveals the clean new house yeah and it brings that the white text up she refused aftercare <laughs> therapy and has begun hoarding again like blah, blah, blah. the she, city took away her she was kids. trapped under a <laughs> pile of debris three weeks later yeah while her suffering body was a heart discovered attack within a month <laughs> yeah all of her cats ate her uh that's where she's headed for sure if the troll doesn't get her first i mean she looks like she has this like bits of gum just stuck in her hair yeah. Like, there's big tendrils of something just in her floof hair. What a character to play. What a, like, to go from being the OG Catwoman. Yeah. To being like, can you just be, like, batshit crazy? Like, okay. Talk to yourself like, she's, a lot. Yeah, because she's, like, not a witch. No, she's an know? artist. But she's just, she's 
way out there. She's an artist that's just suffered some personal tragedy. That's all that is. She's all all artists. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's that's all that is her MO. Like she just had some siblings that got turned into wooden dolls <laughs> in the beginning of the movie. You know. Put happen. you down a weird path. Yeah, yeah. You start sculpting shit out of raw iron. And uh I don't know. You building gates around it. your property. Yep, and talking to yourself. Oh. Which I like how it's always like it's daytime everywhere on her property mm-hmm. until you get into the woods. Where it's a perpetual mist. And, and then it's just like, yeah, it's so dark and misty. I expect all the trees are dead too, so there's no foliage yeah. cover. At any point, I expect to see Ed Harley just digging up a corpse in the far corner yeah. of it. Oh, oh Ken buried there or buried out there, like on a fucking platform with a pumpkin on it. Yeah. Yeah, like the very kin out there ain't too proud of. Don't go past that tree. Oh. It looks like um, in Jason's dreams, in Jason, uh, Freddy versus Jason, when he's oh, like yeah. dragging that body and it's like the weird, water like, lightning and the lightning. Effects. Yeah, like that's what her all of her land looks like. It looks like it's inside Jason's head and he's asleep. Like, and, but it's after you go through like a door of like weeds and shit that before that form like a perfect arch like oh, yeah. doorway like uh fred penner's playhouse which is a that's an old old deep cut nickelodeon show i don't know that one it's a weird one where like an old guy with a banjo had like a <laughs> I'm, he I had like a now. little arch like that and you could go and you crawl through a hollowed out log and then like he had a fire and like a bunch of logs around it and then a bunch of kids would meet him out there and he'd tell stories it's really weird fred penner Fred Penner's Playhouse reference, deep cut. But, uh, yeah. Although, I, for her house being, like, out in the middle of nowhere and her land being in the middle of nowhere and spooky, those bullies find those kids fucking lickety split, man. Like, they find the they find the tree house and yeah, they're the like... the haunted house they make up. Yeah, the oh, that... House. We followed, we saw them, we followed them in here. Fucking kids. And then they're... Th- they start throwing <laughs> rocks, which prompts them to start flinging whole pizzas, cold <laughs> pizzas, apparently, back at them. Because they have, a, and, uh, like, a potato gun that fires dog food out of the... I would just throw the whole can, but oh, they Oh, man, launch. yeah, just dent their skull. <laughs> yeah. Get the fuck out of here, you mullet-having dork. But they shoot just dog food and pizzas at them and causes them to run away. Yeah. Which is... You you got to be pretty damn creative to create a potato gun that like shoots the food out of the can and then leaves the can like, has like a, a can damn dispenser like yeah like a fucking bling, artillery bling. shell or yeah. something like like oh now we got to take out the the spent shell yeah I had to reload now is there gunpowder in the back like of pedigree it, yeah the is there gunpowder in the back inch of the pedigree or the alpo or whatever like what's the Firing Ernest back, charge. Ernest is back there with two cans of Aquanet, just spraying it, shh, and yeah. loading a can in. Yep, yeah. Like, how does this? How does this work? Can it work? Some YouTube channel out there should build us this treehouse, which they build in a, a day, pretty False. much. False. It would in take a all... day just to haul all that shit out there yeah. for one. Yeah. And nobody ever sees that. Like, and Ernest carrying part of a car. Yeah, back into the woods, and it's already dark when they start. So is it? It's like uh, Pet Cemetery too. Like, how long did it take you to bury Gus? You know what I mean? Like, that's an eight. That's almost a full work day. You ever, that is you ever, a full work. You ever dig a two foot by six foot fucking hole? That's all day. Your hands are jacked up. So yeah, like, You're like frailty. You're just taking your blistered hands and it's running it under a cold oh, tap. Oh yeah. It's, I'm quite all right, Barbara. I ran it under a cold tap. <laughs> Sean the Dead reference. Deep cut. But, uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, you're not building that treehouse in a day. But this whole movie takes place over, what, like two days? Halloween Eve and Halloween? Pretty much, yeah. It's quick. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because uh, Halloween Eve, we resurrect the troll because it's the only day you can. And Halloween Day, when all the Halloween dance and all the stuff is the going on. The costume trick- contest. Yeah, and trick-or-treating and whatnot, all that's going on. That's when we vanquish the trolls. Yeah. So, yeah, two days. Uh, and you've built a treehouse. You've almost killed the mayor's kids. <laughs> and they bust out the back of the mayor's car by jacking a truck up. 
Oh yeah, like six feet high. Like that's it's something a, I would do. It's on a accident. hand jack. I'm like, you can stop now. You can get under. You could. The kid can almost walk underneath. Yeah, it. you don't. The tire doesn't have to be off the ground like by a foot for you to change the tire. But that's something like, like I yeah. totally would do. This that I feel is excessive. This is probably like my height. He has this thing jacked up. Yeah. And it's a real flimsy ass jack. It's not. It's not like a professional, like big ass, like two ton jack. It looks like something you'd use on go karts. Yeah, it came with like a Yugo. It's yeah, a, yeah. It's, it's that flies off and smashes the back of the mayor's car. He still keeps his job. Yeah, I don't know how, but uh, yeah, he gets himself into all sorts of hijinks in this movie, including, which I love, uh, when he goes into the. Uh, convenience store <laughs> and oh i love charades and t for two two for three <laughs> ah, two barrels <laughs> yeah how quick the uh shopkeep is to just yoink out the gun and be like i just I'm, like how when you, i've never seen someone outside of like very cartoonish scenarios that they're so scared they can't speak <laughs> well and also it's halloween oh, Jimmy, so. you, play, you play charades you play for keeps know what i mean <laughs> Because what if it? Because it's a short person. I think it's if it's not Warwick Davis, it's one of Warwick Davis's homies. Uh, one of the other it's seven just something dwarves. like three to four feet tall, scurrying around. Like. Yeah, it's, a, it's clearly a kid in a costume. But his immediate reaction is to, to grab a gun. He's well, he's he's <clears throat> a, he's had to encounter some shit. Yeah, well, I mean, you to already got, have a shotgun on hand, ready to go. I, the mayor's kids probably rob him, but uh, it, on a but, regular basis. And it's, and it's weird because he really blows that brief encounter way out of proportion by immediately going to a double barrel shotgun. But he's very much like like kicking the dirt and like, oh, shucks, gosh darn it, when the kids literally ride their bikes into the store <laughs> and just steal all his dairy products. <laughs> like he, he, the extent of his threat there is like, I'm going to tell your parents about this. Yeah. He just pulls like a string and he's got a spike strip by the door. Like, Yeah, that's what he should be having. Yeah. <laughs> Like some barbed wire strapped metal door should have, like a shutter should have fall. The wall from the running man. Yeah. Like. <laughs> <laughs> Damon, you didn't have to kill them. Well, I'm not wearing this crap. <laughs> Forget it, Killian. I'm not killing them. Yeah, that would have taken a completely different turn if he just like, Surprise, bitch! Like locked down. The Jimmy's store. Jimmy's has had enough of this chicanery in this town. I'm killing all you kids in this in this store. But uh, yeah, conventional bullets. Nothing uh, that you would expect to work works on the trolls in this movie. The troll even can pull the car or the truck. <laughs> He's pulling against 200 horsepower, <laughs> which doesn't. Im- it's not the more impressive thing to me that he's pulling a rope that's attached to the back of the truck and he's winning the tug of war. It's that the, the knot in this rope is stuck between like a wooden, like tailgate fence on the back of this truck. That's not breaking. Oh yeah. Like that's nothing clearly is like on the water back of logged and just, you know, old as which, shit. But again, Ernest drives like a 1950s. It looks like Dan's pickup truck from Nightmare Five. He's gonna punch his ticket in, baby. Which hey, which the back of his truck includes a barrel, yeah, like, like you do, twenty feet of rope, and hedge clippers. Uh, well, I mean, yeah. <laughs> he is a uh, custodian, master of the custodial arts, as he says. He's no, I, I, that's Dave Chappelle and. Half baked. That's oh yeah, trick. but he is always doing like some kind of public service work. Yeah, some sort of handyman. Yeah, he's the other than the bank camp. Well, he's a custodian there. Yeah, he's a trash man here. He's always some kind of civil service trash worker. man. He's doing those dirty. He's he's the original Mike Rowe. There you go. He's the dirty jobs. Nice. But only two That's things it. can kill this troll: the heart of a child, which we don't get that puzzle solved until way later. Yeah. And I love it. Like, Unconditional love, baby. A mother's care, <clears throat> which straight up like a like like a little kid's telltale video game. They're like M I something K. <laughs> they literally have it spelled out minus a letter in the book of how to take out a troll. Mm-hmm. We just don't know what the A is. The, he thinks it's an A. M I A K. Miak. Yeah. 
Uh, but speaking of the unconditional love, buddy, the one, like, so this movie goes places. This movie goes over the top like all earnest movies do. We have silly things that happen that you just don't question. You know, you just go along for the ride. The one thing where I'm like, oh, come on, is the uh, Hallmark moment for me that kind of gives us our unconditional love. Where the mom is dropping off the kid at the Halloween costume contest and yeah. the kid's like, I hate you. And then the mom's like, I'm not too fond of you either. And then the kid's like, Mom, I'm sorry. I love you. Like, that scene to me just screams Hallmark. And every time I'm like, could have gone all night without looking at that. Like, everything else that happens in the movie I'm totally cool with. But I just hate that exchange. I don't know what it is where I'm like, go. Go back to the troll. I don't mind it. It ends up being useless because that's just <laughs> that's just to for Earth a kid's yeah. character to realize it. She never relays that information too earnest really mm -hmm. like he doesn't get like that intel nugget, yeah. from that situation so it ends up being pointless entirely i do like his scene that i don't know maybe it's just how i take it but that's where this movie takes its one like like serious take to me okay is we're in the showdown it's surrounded by like a circle of fire mm -hmm. troll versus earnest Mano y mano. You have a you have just just like our our last show. We have a whole mob of people that are evil dies tonight. Evil dies tonight. Got the iron and everything. Yeah, and the, and I love the like slow motion realization on Ernest's face because he's he's ready to he finds a milk, which it's not Miak. It ends up being milk. That's 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 a mother's care. Doesn't end up working because he's too strong for him. He doesn't know that he's like milk will kill this troll. He's like come on, well, like he's holding that pistol. Like come on. I got something for you, double ugly. You do good <laughs> against little kids and dogs. Come up against me. And then he's realizing in that hot in that moment, this is all my interpretation. He's like, he's th like, this is what adulthood drives you to. Like just going too hard, mm -hmm. too much. And he's looking around and seeing all these people in slow motion just saying, kill it, kill it, just kill it. And it takes me to a weird spot, like, all the way back to uh, in X-Files when Scully gets abducted. Oh, okay. And they do, like, a callback to where she is with her brothers and, like, with a BB gun shooting a snake. And it's, like, all fun, like, in the moment. But then she realizes she's taking a life. Yeah. And feels bad about it. Mm hmm So you have this this setup where he's <clears throat> realizing, like, that's, that's, not, that's not the heart of a child. Right. Forgiveness is acceptance. Yeah. And he does it. Yeah. Something that not people do, you know, for the basic of shit today. For things that are people are different about or how they look at things. I think that's because we're 40, so we can pull that. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, and it means something. More, yeah. than, more than it meant when we were like 9, 10 years old. Like, much like Monster Squad, reasons like, why are you. Dad, why are you crying in earnest? Like, don't because you worry about this it. This shit's deep. Yeah. <laughs> and you don't know it's deep. <laughs> Not until you're 40. You'll you'll get it. Uh, you'll be living it in about 15 years, pumpkin puss. <laughs> <or> whatever. <laughs> you, you will, because shit just makes you soft. And it's just in that brief moment, that's the only time I feel like it's fucking real, where he's just like, yeah, all these people are just, they're hard. They've been, they've been edged to be like, just... Just fucking in something. Just oh, get it over with. Kill it. Yeah. Oh, we gotta kill it. Gotta <laughs> kill it. Hey, hey, hey. But but he's like, no, I'm gonna. And he, that's the other only way to kill is embrace this thing. And he kisses it. <laughs> I love so many people I know that are like, that's the grossest thing in the whole the, movie. To oh, them the is snot. The string of snot from the smooch. Ah. Look, man. We were but just talking remember, about from beyond. Okay? I remember that shit was in every commercial for this movie, though. Is the hey. oh yeah? There's your other signature. Yep. If, uh, if a signature of this movie is him and the old lady neck brace, he has to at some point. Hey. Oh yeah, got to do that. Uh, every once in a while, he work in the. You know what I mean? And I don't feel like he does in this movie. But I know for a fact it's in the other movies. I'm really trying yeah. to think back to if he says that in this movie. But I don't think so. 
He might have been dipping out of it around this time. I, I, I bet it's in there. It's just... It's just under the radar, and I did not catch it. But I, it has to be somewhere in there. It's just got to be. Maybe. I, I need to... I refuse to believe it's not somewhere in there. Yeah. Well, when I revisit it, re-revisit it, because I watched it on my own. I didn't watch it with the kids. And it's... <laughs> so every October, it does kind of become like a... You got to throw it on. It's a staple. Yeah. So, so um, spoiler alert, we are recording this. Long before October, so October is always in the hearts. Though. Yeah, so when I do get to rewatch this with the fam, I will uh, listen very closely <laughs> like, for the you know what I mean. There's gonna be in the, you know what I mean in there. You're like, you and then know, I'll send you a you're, snap. You're do, <laughs> yeah, it'll be the uh, DiCaprio like. Mm, mm, he's, <laughs> you said the thing. You like the gum chewing? Strong. <laughs> I literally said that like six forty five this morning. That's good prop work right there. That's right. That guy's a fucking asshole. I now I just want to watch Once Upon a Time in Hollywood because there's never a wrong time to watch that movie. Uh, I'm a ringing endorsement for that movie, but uh, yeah, yeah. I am for <clears throat> most of Django Unchained. Yeah, I I really have a problem. I I love that movie, but man, it's it's like hard for me to pull off the shelf. But once I'm watching it, I like it. But I just really I don't like this slave stuff. Like I, you know what I'm saying? Well, that's like a big part of the movie. I know, and that's like, I'm on board till they decide to to end Christoph Waltz. I uh, so right towards the end, yeah. Yeah, but also the the off camera, like the dude that's in the tree. Yeah, that's where I like D'Artagnan, motherfucker. Yeah, like I could stop now. Yeah, and that's what I'm saying is like Tarantino's known for like the crazy blood and the violence and stuff, which I live for. I love. But when, with Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, he, like, kind of averts us from the real tragedy. You can't, yeah. and you can't do that with slavery. You know what I'm saying? You like, you can't the, be like, well. You can't take the fantasy route. <laughs> yeah, you can't be like, well, that didn't happen. You know what I mean? Like, so you have to, sh- you don't have to show it in such graphic detail, but it has to be a character in and of itself. And it's yeah. hard. It's hard for me to be like. Yeah, <laughs> let's do this. <laughs> you know, I'd rather watch uh, the crazy 88 get all hacked up, <laughs> to be honest with you. Yeah, yeah. For sure. Well, we don't have any sadness as far as somebody dying in this movie, but do you have the coveted brown panty achievement for I, someone? I do. Uh, so we'll move on to that brown panty award. Oh, baby. It's time to slip into something. The Brown Panty Award. My Brown Panty Award. I, I, with a movie like this, you got to kind of think out of the box, right? Because we don't yeah. really have a perfect execution. We also really don't have a, a traditional sense of someone dying that we care a great deal for. Yeah. So, in an instance like that, you have to give a Brown Panty Award to someone that you truly love or appreciate that's involved in the movie. And we talked about the dastardly duo already, but my brown panty award is going to the Kyoto or Chiodo brothers, however you pronounce it, because without them, I don't think this movie would be as revered. I feel like if you put some other Joe Blow in charge of that troll (laughs) or multiple trolls, um... It could have been very hokey. And and these two fellas know how to give us a monster that appeals to, like, childlike fears, but also looks good. It's It yeah. stays looking good. It's a big animatronic head. It's got all these moving parts. I like the, like, Beekler's ghoulies. Yeah. Uh, but it also does have kind of a ghoulies-esque... A little bit. Um, ...thing to it. Or, or like a... Which would also be Beekler, right? Like cellar dweller. Like it's yeah. got that everything is slimy. Yeah. But it's not sc- and it's not scaring you to the point of like I need therapy. But like you might <laughs> get you might have like a creepy dream. If you're watch- if you're a kid and you're watching this around Halloween, you might be like, dang, right. that thing got me a little bit. I sure hope that isn't under my bed or beside me in yes. my bed. Yeah. 
<laughs> like Larry Drake and Dr. Giggles under the <laughs> under the sheet just breathing. <laughs> That's a callback to like two months ago, three months ago. <laughs> just for you. But guys. only in real time. Yes. Um yeah, so that's how that's how I have to do my brown panty award is just uh, because without them, I think you lose a lot of the heart of this movie. Uh, I kept mine in movie because I was like, where do I feel the most sorrow? And it's for when they he turns rimshot into uh, a wooden dog. Yeah, which you get the I combination. Do, I don't want to talk about it. Go ahead. I you mean, get, you get the combination of first you get sorrowful, sorrowful Ernest. But then you like it's the only time I ever can imagine seeing pissed. Oh yeah, Ernest, because he he's portrayed like trying to be a tough guy in scenes, like and goes to camp when he goes to fight, you know, the construction company mm-hmm. that's moving in. But I really feel like uh, it's it, it's it's we- it's a weird parallel. It's like the equi- equivalent of like you stole John Wick's car and killed his dog, sir. Yeah, like, you you're pissed. in big trouble. <laughs> you pit, like you angered Ernest P. Worrell. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> click. Yeah, you're on your own, son. Yeah, yeah. He just marches and just fucking jams the gas and takes off in his car and has no qualms. All you know, it's the second time he's done it. He just runs this fucking troll <laughs> down. Well. And and sidebar again, where you're like sneaking in stuff that bothers an adult, as to not necessarily clicking with a kid. Uh, we have old pets, you yeah. know what I mean. We've lost pets. It's a George and, Carlin joke of you're purchasing a small tragedy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and an and an inevitable tragedy too. Like, and we're sick people because we'll go through it and it'll be the worst experience, and we'll be like. Should Give me that. another one of them. Should do that again. That yeah. Was, <laughs> yeah, that was real good. Yeah. Give me another heartbreak in 15 years. <laughs> you know, please. That's literally a, the George Collins video. Like, yeah, shit, isn't he cute? Well, how hell, he's going to die. Hey, <laughs> Mitch, you want an apple? No, because eventually it will be a core. <laughs> um, but, yeah, that's a that's a heavy hitter of a, a sequence because it's – it plays you know to oh, if yeah, you've ever lost like a the, pet. Yeah, the singular like piano like chords in there to really emphasize the 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 the, the, the capturing the moment of mm-hmm. he's potentially lost something, and he kind of undersells it a little bit when he's like, "Oh, sure, they swim better now, but what am I going <laughs> to call him, Splinter?" <laughs> also, sidebar to the, I didn't look at the dog's name in the credits, which shame on me, right? The the dog who plays Rimshot is like the dog of that era is one of the best trained animal actors and I'm saying that seriously I'm not yeah. I'm not trying to joke like the motherfucker drives a car <laughs> which I know he's not truly driving a car but they train this they fucking sell dog to me use that a, he's driving the car yeah plus uh has the most adorable like bark yeah. ever that like it's like one tone that rawr, I can't even do it. like. I love that fucking dog. I. You know, like when he's like when and goes to jail when it's too earnest and he's like ar, ar. <laughs> like how is a dog conveying to me confusion on who to bark at? But he's doing it. Yeah, and he's not. He doesn't. He's he doesn't come off as Ernest's dog. He's like his partner. And oh, Ernest yeah. talks to him like he's his partner. Rimshot. Like <laughs> I can't believe Rimshot. He's pulling against 200 horsepower. Put it in reverse. <laughs> and the dog does. Uh, Which is the origins. A perfectly good I've, dog. I've heard that's the origins of the troll face. Is That's the face Ernest makes when he goes, how about a bumper sandwich, booger lips? <laughs> <laughs> that face is the is the animated troll face that just became internet famous. I'm like, oh, its origins are Ernest goes goes uh goes full troll on a troll. <laughs> nice. I didn't know that. So yeah, full circle. But uh yeah. Uh I suppose <laughs> suppose we should move on to the next segment. <laughs> Correct? Yeah, so we didn't we don't have anybody kill on the good side but i guess yeah we got technically death of sorts on the other side these these trolls do get turned into mushy piles of goo so what is the perfect execution in this one <laughs> you're gonna die clown perfect okay so my perfect execution 
I think it's a no-brainer, even though all of the the kills, air quotes, kind of get uh, gated, you know? We're get, like, oh, let's put everything back together. We're going to save they, the day. They even spin like killer clowns when they get hit with the book. <laughs> yeah. yeah, like just like the, the cotton candy cocoons. Um, but I feel like when you're watching this movie, every movie like this, every kid's movie, there's got to be a, a truly despicable character that you just want to get off, right? Please yeah. kill so and so. Every line of dialogue they have is insufferable. They are there for one reason. They're there to make you go, "Fuck that guy." And so you can cheer when they die. So my perfect execution goes to the fat little boy with the mullet <laughs> who uh is the epitome of every child bully Ever, it's like every. He's even got like the body type of people. Oh that were yeah, bullies at that age. Yeah. Like I remember having like pain in the ass bullies that looked almost to a T like that. I, I, I when I was rewatching it, compared it to something that I'm not gonna say on air because <laughs> I don't want to get in more trouble than I already get in for the things I say on this show. But just say uh, it and we'll just beep out the whole long stretch of it. <laughs> okay, <laughs> this little kid looks like every fat lesbian ever. Just saying. We can bleep it. <clears throat> but uh, <laughs> it's true, man. Uh, I hate this fucking kid. And it's not often when you see, like, a kid where you're like, I hate you, dude. I want you to get fucked up. So when the troll finally gets him, which I don't know if this happened to you, but every time I watch this movie, when the lead kid is like on his bike and he's gonna go to this costume contest and then there's that other kid's like where are you going are you going to the costume contest and he gets turned into yeah i wouldn't every time i'm like haha that was the fat bully but then i'm like no it wasn't the fat bully because that kid was way too nice they you know they look yeah. very similar it's kind of like uh friday the 13th part five whenever we can't tell the camp leader versus who is jason Oh, you know, yeah. like, which, is that the camp leader? Who is that guy? Who's the guy? I don't know. Crap my ass. Yeah. And, I, and every time I'm like, that was not a big enough payoff for the fat bully. <laughs> and then later I'm like, ah, the fat bully, still, he's still got to get it. So, <laughs> fuck that kid. Um, I, all the troll kills are are fun. I love the, we have a ring around the rosy where he's just getting, where Ernest is getting chased by two trolls and he goes in between like a hole in the tree and they smash into each other. I get a kick when he's got, he just starts he grabs a baseball bat and he starts like color commentating like a like for a ball game like he's just <laughs> smashing trolls in the face with the baseball bats. Uh, but for the kills, the one I just find amusing and it's an off-screen kill is we get he has a floorboard made inside the the treehouse mm -hmm. and you can tell that a couple of trolls are like busting through the floor from underneath. And this is where he's dressed up like he's a lumberjack. <laughs> it's like, would you fellas like a little bit of this milk? And pours it into the hole. And steam and shit flies out of it. So he's, he's killed two more trolls. And he's just like, that milk must have gone bad. <laughs> I don't know why I like that, but I just do. I like that he gets into a whole nother costume <laughs> to kill two trolls. And then to another costume to load up some milk into a mailbox that's got, like, uh, drone wings on it. <laughs> And flies it out. Why not? Yeah, that's when he switches into his crazed combat aviator pilot. See, I'm telling you, dude, he's got schizophrenia or something. Because, like, <laughs> when he's telling that one story, he changes costume, like, eight times. It's and he's just sit in there watching it, and he, like, takes a step back when he changes to the Ottoman. <laughs> We're the Ottomans, and you're not! <laughs> oh, brother. And then she, he knows ahead of time when other kids are like, the Ottomans, he's like, don't, don't ask. Yeah, don't get it. <laughs> I was like, this will be at least a seven costume chain <laughs> story. We don't have time for it right now. Yeah, there's like full production value behind his stories. Like yeah. he needs a curtain. He has that. <laughs> yeah, there's makeup, a Fu Manchu that like hangs down. He's got like That's road warrior shoulder pads, yeah. Viking helmets. And when he's the pilot, he actually has like a fan blowing so it can get the... <laughs> yeah, the... the the, the neckerchief like flowing in the wind like America. <laughs> I wonder if there was like wire in that 
and then it it was just dang- people like and it was dangling so the fan could make it flat, but the wire was holding it back. You know, that's the shirt I want for the Fourth of July. Like I, I know Ernest Walmart, Aviator. Yeah, him and the Aviator just with the wind blowing. Like there, there's the face of America right there. American flag behind it, eagle on his shoulder. Yeah, you get the Rick Derringer, real American music playing behind it. Just give me that. Yeah, you read all this like the like beer can. Like, all the, like, America bullshit shirts they put out every year, like, give me this. And the uh, red, white, and blue, like, uh, Zubaz. Zubaz pants. Yeah, American flag Zubaz pants. You think anybody wants a roundhouse kick to the face when wearing these bad boys? Nope. No. Think anybody's calling me a loser because I go home to Starla every night? Nope. No. <laughs> Is that Diedrich Bader? That's that guy's name. Yes. Yeah, okay. Nailed it. That's a Napoleon Dynamite reference. Deep cut. A couple of them. But uh, I suppose we can move on to that next segment which uh, would be how to survive I'll let you take a look at it this week, Evil, and see what the book has to offer. Ugh, don't let the, just because I picked that up with one hand fully, this is very heavy. I'm just really strong in my left hand. <laughs> <sighs> Let's see, what do we have? What old Walter Paisley have to say <sighs> this week? Invest in Miak. <laughs> Authentic Bulgarian. And, and that's uh, words... Wise, wise words. There's more space dust on here. Had to cook four forty humans. <laughs> Listen to Walter Paisley. He wouldn't steer you wrong. Also, if you could somehow invest in the heart of a child, probably wouldn't be a bad. Maybe a whole necklace of children hearts, like Got your some Dolph Lundgren and shit. <laughs> yeah. And then they won't even come near you. This is it's also a Doctor Giggles. You know, just carry around a bucket of hearts. Room temperature, yeah, yeah, yeah. child heart bucket. <laughs> Too big. <laughs> Too small. Just, just right. Just right. This will fit the girl from Charmed quite nicely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which I love is just like Sharpie on the chest too. Like, I'm going to cut this out and put this in. Because yeah. that's how doctors do it. <laughs> yeah. Surging, sur- surgical work is not hard. Yes. Uh, well, now that we've uh, had our one survival tip from the one and only Walter Paisley. I suppose it's time to move on to uh, one of the other staples of the show, the second to last segment. Yeah. Time to get nasty. It's time for them one star reviews. Hated it. Again, I also don't understand or believe that anybody dislikes this movie. Uh, I, I'm going to uh, to take it to another le- another level because not only are we talking about somebody tonight that hates this movie, that I'm pretty sure it led to some marital strife. Because <laughs> this is from Kathy Daughtry on December 17, 2016, right before Christmas. Yeah, we got Bummer. some real real problems headed toward In the, the Daughtry da- family, <laughs> the Daughtry household. Yeah, because yeah, Kathy says one star. He loved it, maybe considering divorce in the blank. Is that for real? That's her title. She goes on to tell us, why do I always fall for this? (laughs) Edit. Semicolon. Fiance gives this, (laughs) gives this 10 out of 10. He loved it. Maybe considering a divorce in the future. So they're not even married yet. Kathy is not married. She is just engaged to her man that apparently is giving Ernest Scared Stupid a 10 for 10 like any normal red-blooded American does. Should and will. But she is really reconsidering the entire marriage proposal because he gives this movie 10 out of 10 stars. Hey, man. Uh, I am pretty sure I've told this story on this podcast once before because we have covered the movie Predator. But if... Some of the new listeners don't know this story. I'll just give you the abridged book of ninja fighting. I have a buddy who 
had met this woman and he was like, dude, she's the one I'm going to marry this woman. I got to bring her over. We got to have like a barbecue. We got to hang out. My buddy is the biggest predator fan on the planet. You can never say an unkind word about the movie Predator in his presence. He will get visibly angry. He may f- kill you. Starts turning colors. He has a giant room filled with Predator toys, you know, all kinds of memorabilia, comic books. We're hanging out. We're having our barbecue. And our food is cooked, so we're going to sit down and eat. And we're like, maybe we should throw a movie on because I have a large quantity of cinema. You don't say. And he goes, uh... So watch Predator because it was in summer. It kind of feels like a, you know July around July. Yeah, it's sweltering your, heat. You know, sweaty. And he brings up Predator, and she goes, "Is that that stupid alien movie with Arnold Schwarzenegger?" You could have heard a fucking pin drop in my house. The tension was it was like a fog. I would look like the dude from Always Sunny when he's like, "Oh shit, shit's going down." So this is a. Uh, I want to say this is a Saturday because I know we we weren't working that day. the The rest of the day goes very quietly. Mm-hmm. We part ways. Sunday night, go to work because we work third shift. He's like, "Kick that bitch to the curb." Broke up with her, dude, and like literally forty eight hours prior, was telling me like she's the one. I'm gonna marry her. Could not share his life with someone who liked Predator. So I get it. Was her name Kathy? Might have been. Might have been. Uh, I totally get it. But you're in the wrong if you leave your husband for liking Ernest Scared Stupid. It's the wrong reason. He should leave you because you don't like it and and have the preemptive strike. This leaves me trying to think, is there a movie that exists where if the wife was like, that's the worst thing I've ever seen and ever want to see it again, would I reconsider everything because of that? Sidekicks. Although, I don't know. I think it's kind of par for course. Most of the stuff I really, really enjoy is stuff I know she doesn't care for. (laughs) So if anything, I I take it as a as a challenge. Yeah, to try. Because literally, that's how Always Sunny's went for me. I started watching that show, and she's like, "I hate everyone on this show. I don't like it. I don't want to see. These are all terrible people. I don't want nothing to do with it." (laughs) Yeah. Spoiler alert: She watched, started watching the show. She beat me to getting a tattoo. Of the show before me, I still haven't gotten one. She got one. Got to get the like, rum ham, baby. Like you remember a year ago when you couldn't stand to see the sight of any of these people, and now you just it's it's comfort food for you. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I don't. I would just probably take it the other route. I can't think of anything that like if she was like this is Sopranos. You're like fuck this. I hate it. <laughs> uh, sidebar: This just happened. It's not a, a major deal, but but my. My wife, who is running the ones and twos and changing camera angles right now, so she's put a close-up on me right now uh, and is listening to me talk. Zoom. Yeah, the, enhance. Enhance. The other night, uh, I was like, is there anything you want to watch? Like, do you have a suggestion? She's like, nah, I don't care. And she went outside to talk to our neighbor. So I was down in the movie room by myself. <laughs> Asking him, you got any suggestions? And so I, uh, I yell upstairs. I'm like, hey, how do you feel about Last Action Hero? And she didn't answer. Because she was outside, and I didn't know. So I'm like, fuck it. <laughs> no answer is a yes. Go upstairs, put it on. She comes inside, and it was already like 8.30, 9 o'clock. It was late, and Last Action Hero is not a short movie. And uh, I'm like, I picked this because you didn't answer me. And she's like, eh, <laughs> it's not my favorite, but it's okay. And as a first time I've ever heard, it's not my favorite come out of her mouth. And I got to admit, like a, a small piece of me was like, no. Oh! Who doesn't like Last Action Hero? I mean, critics, well, but they're wrong. Well, she didn't say. Right. She didn't say she hated it or anything. It's but not her favorite, which I can identify with because good movie, but also not my favorite Arnold. But it's an any time of day type of movie. It's hilarious. I will give you all that. But if you're tell- if you're asking me what's your top three or five Arnolds, I'm not putting Last Action Hero in that lineup. It's not coming to me. It's, going it's not to in the top five. Commando. Running Man, Predator, True Lies. True Lies makes it now. Yeah, True Lies, because I keep forgetting about True Lies. And, uh... Twins. <laughs> Twins is highly, highly possible. 
but yeah, I just don't ever think last last action hero jumps in there. Maybe it might it might get the fifth spot there, but I just I just cause I'm not really thinking. Last all, stand. I like nah, last stand a lot. Killing Gunther. See, and that's one I'm not overly fond of. I didn't think I would be. There's a lot of things that are going against that movie that I would be like, this is bullshit. End of days. But, yeah, end of days. You need to watch better. You need to watch Aftermath, but I think it's, it might ruin you. It's mainly all because, like, in Killing Gunther, when he's just playing, like, the arms dealer. <laughs> yeah. At the end, like, oh, who's Gunther? It was me all the time. <laughs> ah. <laughs> Or that he sleeps with one of the guys as a pretending to be a woman and just pulls off the, like, clearly it's a woman, but pulls off this bullshit mask and it's like, eh, it was me the yeah, whole time. A giant Austrian muscly man. Just that he, he's taken comedy to that that kind of extent is and that's, great. Yeah, and that's, I was literally talking about it. I know we're way off topic, but uh, Arnold's <laughs> comedic chops are so slept on. It's it's bullshit. He is hilarious because he knows who he is. He knows what he is, and he leans into that. Yeah. And that makes it. This is all stemming from a one star that was going to result in a divorce. Yeah. Get divorced. <laughs> Do it. I dare you. There's plenty uh, of fish in the sea. There's apps for all that kind of stuff now. But I suppose now that uh, we've broken up Shaniqua and Tare or whatever his name was. We didn't break anybody up. They but broke themselves Kathy up. Kathy was already like, we are not going to go forward way with this off marriage. Kathy. Yeah. Kathy. Well, that's right. Kathy. She gone. But uh, now that we're done with that, we can move on to the final segment, Evil, which is what? Uh, it's time to play the game. Oh. It's all about the game, and how you play it. I'm a master of hedge clip, Keto, the secret oriental fighting guard of the Japanese gardener. <laughs> Whoa, you held on to that. That breath was like, oh, I'm about to leave. <laughs> nice. Uh, that's right. It is time to play the game, and if you're new here, welcome. But you're probably scratching your head asking yourself, what's the game? Well, the game is a deep cut in and of itself where you got to pick a prop from the movie that we are covering, but it can't be a well-known prop, so... Pick something weird, pick something odd, pick something off the beaten track, and let us know in the comments on the podcast, let us know in the comments on YouTube, Discord, Facebook, all them places, Patreon, wherever you find us. But I was going to say, since we're covering Ernest Scared Stupid, I'll just, with all Ernest movies, I'm going to say his wardrobe, <laughs> his, 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 his Ernest denim. garb, off limits, right? Probably not, sure. uh, not fair. Yeah. Uh, it's probably is, it, is there is yeah I was gonna say is there anything else that you would deem? I mean, if I was being cruel, I'd be like, you can't take his wherever he found the meak. Yeah, particularly out of season meak. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I don't know. Pick something weird. Let us know because uh, we live for it. It's our our bread and butter. It's our favorite thing. I think I'll go first this week. I don't think you and I are going to <laughs> run across the same prop. But, uh, I mean, there's always a possibility. So We've had the watermelon happen, so. Yeah, watermelon, watermelon. Wherefore out there, watermelon. <laughs> I My prop, mainly because I truly am a master of hedge clip keto and, and martial arts, is going to be the tro- whatever the whatever the two brothers deem these things, the troll away nunchucks. <laughs> troll away spray. I want the nunchucks. Why the hell? It's the <laughs> it's the weirdest scene in the movie to me. Of all the shit we see, even though that Lady Hackmore's got a giant can opener, she's trying to rip open the can that's got Ernest squished in between it. Why the fuck is Bobby the one that he gets pulled off of a billboard, covered like head to toe in some kind of like wrapping paper of himself, driving the van? I, I don't know. He has no, like, his whole, everything but his arms are covered. And he's like, Bobby, look out! <laughs> like, why the fuck is Bobby driving? I, 
Why did he put him in the driver's? Why did he pull him? Why is he attached to him? What's that going to do? <laughs> he's on the ground. He's got a rope tied to him to his brother Bobby in the air on a billboard. Just yanks him off and then puts whatever the fuck all over him. Looks like wallpaper, like yeah, it's for the banners, yeah, yeah. And then like now drive. I don't. Is that a different actor too? The the heavy set brother. Yes, it's. Oh, I was gonna say because he he's not. a di- he's a different guy in Goes to Camp. He's actually uh, he shows up later in like movies like uh, Getting Even with Dad, mm. and I want to say Remote, but I'm not sure on Remote. Definitely Getting Even with Dad. He's in. He's one of. I don't the know Remote. There. I'm thinking Stay Tuned. Yeah, Remote's like Home Alone, but he's he's got a shit ton of like RC cars and flying little you like airplanes. You and VHS Mikey have told me about that movie. Yeah. I've not, I've not seen it. So, I, yeah, I don't know. But, uh, yeah, so what is your official prop then? <laughs> I I want uh, Ernest's truck. The garbage truck or just the... His pickup truck. The pickup truck, okay. Because I want a pickup truck that has 200 horsepower. <laughs> <laughs> and with all his weird shit in the back of it. Look at that suspension, baby. That is my favorite scene, bar none, in the whole movie. Is it looks like a set, it feels like a set, but I still there's something like weird, cozy about it that they're driving it. The town strip. The where he's attacked by the troll, mm-hmm. where Rimshot starts driving. Quick troll away. Shh, I can't believe it. It worked. <laughs> Just for a little bit though. Oh, not for long. <laughs> yeah. That troll's knife was another prop that I almost like it's like a weird scythe of a knife like real long blade and it's got that yeah it looks curve. like some pirate shit oh yeah bit. for sure he's straight up dressed like a pirate too let's just uh, yeah got I, like short of does he he might even have bells on his fucking shoes i don't <laughs> well then it feels like the troll from like cat's eye yeah or the stupid was, troll from troll which was beekler yeah i was tempted with the little uh wooden doll figurines or the brussels sprouts that's that spruce from brussels the tree <laughs> um i love brussels sprouts. i do too uh, but i was like i just really like his his old beater truck that i'm sure will run probably longer than any car i'll ever own in my whole life oh yeah yep that's not a bad problem and, yeah <laughs> gotta have the the vintage that's gotta be like a 1950 something truck that's old as balls man that's old truck. i feel like i can smell that truck when i see it like rust Rust, but like that is it. Oil, know. yeah, <laughs> not cigarettes. Yeah, no, rust and oil. Yep, that's that's a good prop. It's not often we park it, but <laughs> it's not often we dip into the vehicle territory. We do that every great once in a while. Try to pick something a little bit more reasonable to have. Every once in a while, it's like give me something big and odd. Yeah, just give me the entire Stay Puft Marshmallow Man. <laughs> Even that's probably you know. <laughs> yeah, it's not not very big. Human size. Uh, fucking forced perspective baby but uh <clears throat> i suppose on that note should probably get going because after all there's a lot of movies out there and somebody's got to watch them so why not us right you better back off you don't want to fight me i know hai chi kung fu chow mein and i saw hulkamania three times once in slow-mo <laughs> There's a new episode, so rate us and subscribe to the Deep Cut Podcast. There's a new episode every two weeks, oh, yeah. You can find it on Spotify and all major podcast apps. Don't forget to let us know your topic every two weeks. There's a new episode, so rate us. There's a new episode, so rate us and subscribe to the Deep Cut Pie. Cup
episode So rate us and subscribe To the Deep Cut Pike To the Deep Cut Pike To the Deep Cut Pike To the Deep Cut Pike